What's up, YouTube? Bam, and welcome to Wolf King's Vids. All right, I'm gonna critique this guy named uh, You Enjoy Christ, who apparently thinks that uh, in order to be a naturalist, you have to have faith or something like that. Pulling it up. Out is having blind faith. And in our discussion with maybe it'd be it'd probably be a, an atheist a naturalist. Uh, in our discussion, we might turn that around and say, "Well, you have blind faith as well. Um, though you say you lack a belief in God, you have a positive belief in naturalism." Yeah, right. I mean, you say that um, nature is all that there is, and in order for you to say that, you would have to know everything. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, uh, you can be an atheist and not be a naturalist. You 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 gotta ask a person what they what they do believe rather than what they don't. Atheism doesn't necessarily assume naturalism. You could you could basically you could basically be a Buddhist. You, you you don't have to believe in a personal God and believe in all sorts of stuff like uh, reincarnation, meditation, and all this stuff. But uh, but atheism doesn't assume naturalism. And with regard to naturalism. No, that is not the claim. You you don't need to have all knowledge to basically think that uh that natural that naturalistic explanations work. All right, that's like saying uh that's like an argument from ignorance of saying that since we don't have every single um naturalistic explanation to account for every bit of natural phenomena that we see in the real world, that doesn't mean that that it's that that it's impossible to be explained through naturalism. And so um. You don't know everything, therefore, you only believe that nature is all that there is. And many times that gets kind of sidestepped, because what they might say is that, well, no, you're talking about philosophical naturalism. I am an adherent to methodological naturalism. And this was sort of the kind of thing that Bill Nye was um, talking about and how he was trying to sidestep the issue when Ken Ham was talking to him about operational science and historical science. But um, you might take a step back when they say this sort of uh, Just to clarify, um, there's no such thing as operational science or historical science. These, these terms are made up. There's just science. And the reason methodological naturalism is assumed within the scientific method is because Models of predictive power are of utility, and the reason that's actually applied there is because you could basically apply that within the scientific method, and apply that to the real world, and you could basically come up with some uh, explanation for what you're actually seeing from the subatomic to the rest of the cosmos. For every explanation that we actually have of the universe, the answer has been natural. So, thing about methodological naturalism. And, but after you step back, you need to go find out what these two terms mean, philosophical naturalism and methodological naturalism. So looking at Rational Wiki, methodological naturalism is the label for the required assumption of philosophical naturalism. See, they're linked. When working with the scientific method, they limit their scientific research to the study of natural causes. They assume that all causes are empirical and naturalistic. Philosophical naturalism is the flat-out statement or doctrine that the natural world is all that there is. It goes on to say that philosophical naturalism is essentially the logical result of methodological naturalism, the doctrine which assumes that there is no way to contact, detect, or otherwise empirically observe the supernatural. Now, methodological naturalism, as they're referring to it as, is fantastic in the laboratory. I have a chemistry degree, as I've said. And when I was in the lab, I just assumed that natural causation was all that was going on there when I was doing experimentation and that sort of thing. When we look at a pharmaceutical lab coming up for a cure for Ebola or any kind of disease, there's no hocus pocus going on. They're relying on natural causation, methodological naturalism, to come up with solutions. However, when you start to take... Um, methodological naturalism or empiricism and use it to find and theorize about ultimate truths that's where philosophical naturalism and methodological naturalism meet together this is where science meets with faith it's uh,
stop stop right there first of all first of all we're not we're not talking about ultimate truths okay see I, I think what what you're getting confused with here is that um is apparently you think that when 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 a person when a naturalist talks about um when naturalist talks about like science or naturalistic explanations they're supposed to have like all knowledge about everything that's going on and that's not the case at all it's not the fact that we're saying science is entirely correct or has all the answers it's basically that science is the most reliable method to understand how the world works that's basically what it is all right it th th there's no th there's no there's no faith with this okay for because the basis of science is essentially physical evidence and reason logic that's basically how it actually works all right so to so to try to attack the the foundation of science as if it's a as if it's a bad thing it, it th there's there's nothing there there's no there's no real criticism so I, I really don't know what you, what you're honestly talking about really where it meets with religiosity and it becomes philosophy it's where the methodological naturalism starts to employ philosophical naturalism to come up with assumptions about certain things, say certain things that might have happened in the past. They have to assume certain things in the past without knowing. They have to just believe that those assumptions are true. And they yeah, reality being consistent, also being coherent and predictable. As I said, models with predictive power are of utility. That's why we employ them because they have the capacity to give us a correct description of reality. So what's your big criticism with this? Joining of those assumptions with the empirical data is the joining of philosophical naturalism and methodological naturalism and we have faith. And so the conclusions that they come up with uh, in their theories and purported as fact in schools are actually resting upon, yes, hard data, but the hard data rests upon faith in these assumptions, unverifiable assumptions. So how good are these conclusions? It okay, okay. I'm, I'm just going to stop it right here. Um, first of all, you, you could basically look around modern civilization and see the technological advances that have been made in the last three to five hundred years. And notice that with, with with regard to this, it has been the history and achievement of scientific progress. Now, if you're saying that there's apparently some supernatural um, entity or elements that were apparently missing, then the burden of proof is on you to actually justify that claim. I don't have to demonstrate that there are demonstrable, testable, empirical, naturalistic explanations for reality and why it is the way it is, because that is the simplest explanation. That doesn't violate Occam's razor. If you're claiming that that is the case, that there is some supernatural stuff out there, then the burden of proof is on you to verify that. Otherwise, we're going to be more inclined to stay within the null hypothesis because you haven't disproven it. So that's basically my uh, my critique of this video. And if if you if you have if you have a claim about some supernatural thing actually existing, then you have to demonstrate it to be true. Otherwise, I have no real reason to actually believe what you're saying. All right, so uh, that's my video. This has been Wolf King. Peace out. If you like this video, you know what to do. Peace out.